Did you know that Jesus was constantly in trouble with the authorities, the leaders of the synagogue? They didn't like him very much. And we know how that ended up. And the story that we're going to hear today, that's typically called the prodigal son, is really a misnomer. It's really the parable of the lost son that follows with the lost sheep, the lost coin, because Jesus hung around with the lost, the tax collectors, Jewish people that were responsible for getting the taxes from other Jewish people and sending it off to Rome. Not a liked group. They were the lackeys, if you will, of the Roman Empire. There were the loose women all around, so Jesus hung around with them. So this story, which I'm really relabeling as the extravagant father, touches on the very extravagance of our father God. Extravagance in his creation, extravagance in his love, and extravagant in his forgiveness. That's the father, as we read in that first reading, the one for whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth receives its name. So it's from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 11 to 32. Once upon a time, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set out for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long, long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he is, has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. 
But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. My brothers, my sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. One of my dad's favorite stories, and he had a, a number of them, was this very, very wealthy man who was dying. He was in an oxygen tent. And his son, Johnny, came to visit him. And the father said to the son, Johnny, I just want to tell you that you've been a wonderful son. I want to tell you that the ranch in Texas is yours. The upstate farm in New York is yours. The apartment in New York City is yours. You've been a wonderful son. So the son turned to his father and said, you've been a wonderful father to me as well. Is there anything that I could do for you? Yes, said the father. Would you take your foot off the oxygen hose? <laughs> this story that is so familiar has so many layers, and I, I think what would be helpful to do is to get in touch with the family system. See, families are like, they're like mobiles. A nice, healthy family hangs on one string, and all the different little modules of the mobile, mobile hang. And they usually they bounce in their flow, and it's nice and easy. Not many families are like that. They kind of get twisted around each other. And that's what this family was all about. We could use our imagination to wonder, what was it like in this family? There's no mom mentioned. Maybe he is a widower. And there were these two sons that reflect a lot of rivalry that must have been going on for years. Very biblical. Cain, Abel, Jacob, Esau. All the different people that were pitted against each other. It's very common. It's common globally. Political parties pitted. People that are pitted against one another for whatever reason, whether it's race or whatever it might be. Pitted against each other. Israelis, Palestinians. It's all over the world. China against the rest of the world. Autocrats against political parties. I don't want to go on and on because it's just there. Fights going on with the Southern Baptist Convention about the Catholic Church wondering, do we give Joe Biden communion or not? All of this fraternal strife of different kinds happening all the time. And this parable wants to address it. Wants it to stop. We don't know whether the older son eventually came around and went into the part. But what is important is the younger son whipped out his little speech probably several different times to try to get through. And the father said, crank up the music. He's not getting the message. So it took the younger son some time to get to the place where he was comfortable with the party. He didn't come really for the father. He came because he was also looking for something, to be a servant, to get out of poverty. 
He was still kind of in it for himself in a way. But the father just kept cranking up the music, cranking up the dancing, until the son would get to the place where he was overwhelmed by the goodness of his father, of this father. The older son just don't know if it was that sort of baked in clay so much that family system, maybe it took some time. But the father's intervention was very important. The son was angry at the father, and the father, could you just hear a bite in his voice? Can you hear him say, listen, this brother of yours was dead, he's come back to life. Does this not make any difference to you? Did you not know that everything I have is yours to begin with? You numbskull! Didn't you know? You didn't have to work for it. It's yours. Just for, not the asking, but for my giving. So when you think about this familiar parable of the lost son, the extravagant father, what needs to happen is for each of us to look at our family systems, the mobile that floats above. How is it? How can it be improved? And if we take the grace that the Father of God is giving to us, we can work toward whatever might need to be healed or made whole of anything that might participate in some kind of family issues. And they're all over the place, my brothers and sisters. There are very few families that hang like the nice, neat, tidy mobile. And if they try to expose themselves as goody-goody, they're probably in their pride being arrogant and looking down on other people that aren't as whole as they are. So it's important for us to be very humble and to keep the focus on what God is doing for you. God does not hold grudges. God's not in the game. God's not in one side as opposed to the other. God's in it to bring wholeness to everybody. Wholeness. So wherever you find yourself, finding yourself with some cracks in your family system or systems, because we have the family of origin, then we have the family that we propagated, of which we're grateful today. We're grateful for the fathers that maybe didn't have it all together. We ask blessings for sons who may have resented their father because they abandoned their mother well before they were even aware of who he was. All that kind of pain and strife. If the sons could get in touch with the gratitude of God giving them that grace, it could heal and bring wonderful, wonderful blessings to the entire family. Now and the family that's coming after in generations. Because I mentioned this before, there is a thing called strongholds. There are sometimes in our family system, there is such pain, whatever it is, that we get stuck. So what you want to do is do what Paul says. Take every thought that is not in consistency with the message of Christ, Hold that up. It's like you grab the thought, put it up against the wall and saying, what are you doing? I rebuke you, this thought that's anti-communion, anti-love, and cast it out with the power of Jesus. And pray for the gift of discernment that you might know what are the particular kinds and species, if you will, of your family that needs healing. It all goes back to some kind of emotional pain. It's, good. It's, it's all pain. And if we could look with the eyes of God, which God would be lovely to give to us because of this season of the Holy Spirit, if we could just look and let the Spirit of God teach you with wisdom where you need to let go. I'll give you a little, a little exercise. Would you all just stretch your hands out like this? Would you cross over and interlock your fists like this? Would you roll it around? Move the third finger of your left hand. A little bit hard to find which one it is, isn't it? It looks all mixed up. 
That's the way it is with our lives. They get all mixed up. And so I pray that on this Father's Day, great healing and comfort can come to everyone. Whether their fathers are living, whether their fathers are deceased, because the fathers are father because they got that from God the Father, who gave every name of father in heaven and on earth its name, its energy, its charism, its gift. So Lord, I just pray on this Father's Day, as we continue each family to celebrate, may the celebrations be warm and exuberant, as exuberant as the father who welcomed his son back. May we move to a place where we are grateful for the gift of our fathers. For my father, who's been deceased now for 42 years. For my grandfather, Nicholas Stockhammer, my, my father of my mother. Uh, that all of the memories and antecedents and ancestors that we have we just thank you, Lord, because you gave them to us, and through some mysterious way, it trickled down into us becoming born, not too long ago, in terms of 13.8 billion years of the universe. So bless us with wonder, with gratitude, and with great love, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.